17 complete samurai warrior armor pieces once impressed foes on the battlefield. Now the collection of Dr. Richard Bailiveau impresses visitors to the Pointe à Museum in Montreal. They are not decorative armor, they're, re they're real armor that were actually used on, on the battlefield. And so they have a, a military function in addition to being just protective. They are a status symbol of the wealth of the samurai who is uh, wearing it. These armor pieces were worn by officers and generals, not foot soldiers. Most come from the 17th through the 19th centuries, and their goal was to help the warrior win the battle. On the top of the helmet, we find what we call a maitate. A maitate is really a, a, a decoration piece that is more than decorative. It has a strategic function because when you move your head in the actual fight, it distracts the opponent. If you have a terrified demon at the top of your head, it tells your opponent, I'm associated with the dark force of evil. You will not win over me. You're, you're making a status symbol. The strong metal masks would serve strategic functions in a battle. The masks are really mean looking. They have big uh, moustaches that are made with a boar or a bear uh, uh, fur. Uh, they look fierce, they are screaming, they have their teeth with uh, gold leaf uh, or uh, a silver lacquer. They are very, very impressive. So wearing a mask like that, you try to intimidate your opponent. These are called resei uh, mempo, intimidating mask. And at the same time, you have masks that are looking like old lady with no teeth. We call them ubu. And the function of this is to deceive your opponent, to let your opponent think that you are a weak old lady and that you are vulnerable. And by the time you think about that, you're dead because this was an outstanding warrior that was wearing this mask. Bailivo calls the swords next to the armor and the armor pieces themselves exquisitely crafted pieces of military art. Some of them outstandingly are made with thousands of small scale of metal that are hand made, hand pierced, hand lacquered and laced with hundreds of meters of silk thread. Bailivo began his collection of Japanese objects as a young teenager when studying the martial arts. He began to respect Japanese philosophy and the code of the warrior. When you do martial arts, you bow to your opponent before uh, uh, getting in, into fight, and you bow, you bow after the fight. So I think this really defines the samurai traditional culture, uh, respect, honesty, loyalty, resilience. We don't hear these words anymore. We don't even hear the words. So these values were part, were define what the samurais were. They were not only warriors. They were philosophers. They were promoters of art. They helped uh, develop the tea ceremony, the architecture, the garden. They developed calligraphy. They were really uh, supporting artistic developments. They were, they, were, uh, they, they were really yin and yang, really the power of an uh, outstanding warrior and the refinement of uh, men of art and men of philosophy and educated people. They were the intellectual elite of Japan for 700 years. Bailivo's collection includes helmets, swords, tea bowls, ceremonial objects, and calligraphy, objects he collected during his travels as a cancer researcher. I work in chemotherapy. I, we develop drugs to treat cancer. We publish works on cancer prevention. I met a lot of people with cancer. So the strength of the samurai really helped me in my professional career to, because the samurai were challenging death on a daily basis and I challenged death on a daily basis as a cancer researcher. So their way of seeing life and death was really a source of inspiration, not only for my personal life, but as well as for my professional life. He says looking at the warrior armor in his home environment helps him in the battle to end the deadly disease. I live with them. When I have a tough day at work, I come back home and I sit in front of them and uh, they give me back courage, they give me back energy, they give me back inspiration. So they, they are not inanimate objects for me, they are part of my life. I find inspiration in them. Research is really, 
you need energy, you need imagination. Research is a tough job, uh, especially when you aim at uh, curing cancer. So you need uh, the courage and the energy and the resilience of the samurai to get uh, through this uh, through this fight against cancer. So I really, they are really a source of, uh, they're a real part of my life. They are not, uh, you know, I'm just not just a collector that uh, accumulate objects. These objects are a definite source of inspiration for me. They help me uh, try to be a better human being, even if I don't succeed. <laughs> Director of Exhibitions Louise Potier says the museum had been looking to mount a samurai cultural exhibition and was going to contact Japanese museums about borrowing items from their displays. Then Pointe à curators discovered Beliveau's collection. In his home, never before publicly displayed, and one of the finest collections of its kind in the world. We were absolutely amazed by the, the quality of the collection, the, the, the diver diversity of the collection of objects uh, related to samurai. It was something that no one could imagine. So it was something uh, coming like a, like a gift uh, to the museum and from the museum to the Montrealers and, and the visitors uh, from, uh, f from everywhere. I spend my whole life, you know, writing books about public education. I write articles in a Canadian newspaper across Canada. I co-host a television program. So for me, education, population education is a, is a key element in my life. So when the museum approached me to offer me to exhibit the, the collection, I, f I saw there a good opportunity to educate people about, not only about showing them nice objects and sharing my passion, but also sharing with them the, the moral and spiritual and ethical values of the samurai. And we see it at the exhibition, we see the feedbacks we have, I think we really succeeded.